All right, guys, here's a few tips for you that should help you when you're starting out in the game. All right, this first tip is something that will happen to you at the very beginning of the game. That's why I'm showing it you right now at the beginning of this video. Uh, when you have to hand over Boozer's shotgun back to him, you just had a lot of fun with that, by the way, uh, you will come to this gun safe, this gun locker. Make sure you open it and go straight over to the special section where there is a special crossbow for you. The crossbow is incredibly useful at the very beginning of the game because you don't really have that many good weapons. At first you won't be able to pick up the bolts that you find but they are at least craftable. Um, all you need to do is find trees that look like this and scrap that looks like that and you'll be able to uh, craft your own bolts. Now you have the crossbow you should feel a little bit more like taking on the rest of the world. As you probably realize stealth is an excellent way to play this game. You don't waste any ammo, your kills are worth more XP. Sneaking up on your enemy is way better than bludgeoning them to death with a baseball bat for a lot of reasons. Uh, you won't get heard for, for a good reason uh, and you won't be seen for another good reason. Plus I just think it's a lot more satisfying uh, taking on a game like this like that. So you can hide in bushes like this and a lot of people are telling you don't use the torch. Okay, Don't turn it on because you will be seen but you can put it to good effect. While you're hiding in the bushes a quick flash of the torchlight will alert an enemy to your position. Now it's not such a bad thing because it will suddenly come along try to look for you but it doesn't know where you are still so you can take him out with a stealth kill. There are other appropriate places to be stealthy. Um, for example, these nests, you have to take them out um, in several places in the game, often many of them at a time, and they always look like that, always woody, bushy things, either in corners or doorways or whatever. You'll find them, but you can also use this technique to go hide in the bushes, your stealthy technique, uh, and just play the waiting game if you want, wait for one of the enemies to come towards you and take them out. But that won't work for every enemy and of course you'll need to go and seek some of them out stealthily as well. So the best thing you can do is get out your binoculars here and then once you've got an enemy in its sights press the RT button to mark the enemy that way you can track them as you sneak around. Bear in mind there are a couple of very important indicators on your screen. Down by the mini map on the right hand side you've got the sound indicator looks like the image of a speaker. Um, that when you are moving silently will appear in white with a little cross next to it. Uh, just below that is this image, uh, this icon of an eye that is also to indicate that you can be seen. Be aware that those indicators are there because they will help you with your stealthy approach. Uh, some things don't make noise like brutally murdering one of their friends behind them. That doesn't make any noise. Neither does jumping through a window. Uh, they're, they're blissfully unaware that you're sneaking up behind them. Now, while you're out in this outside world, you're going to be wanting to loot as much stuff as you can, wherever you can find it. And of course, pressing R3 will reveal a lot of the locations for where you can find these things. But here's a couple of things about looting. When the items show up as red, when you look at them, uh, that means you've got no space for them. So simply go into your inventory and craft as much stuff as you can, whether that's Molotovs or medical bandages. They're the early things that you can craft just to simply make space for the items in your inventory. Craft as much as you can to free that space up to collect more stuff so you can craft it again later. As you well know, the X on the minimap marks a spot of a dead thing. A dead thing that you can go and pick something up from. Um, but there's sometimes you'll see an X and you're wondering where on earth the thing is. Uh, it can be actually hanging from a tree. Did you know you can actually shoot down anything that's hanging from a tree and you can collect whatever it had on it as well. Usually humans, sometimes zombies as well. Look, I know that you know looting is already a good idea for yourself, but it's not always all about you. You can actually collect the meat from the animals that you happen to kill accidentally like that, or the wolves that you actually meant to kill, uh, and take that meat to some of the camps that will uh, forever thank you for collecting it. Um, and also the flowers. They do like a nice flower from time to time, although there are other herbs and plants that can be found around. So look, once you've found all this stuff, return to any of the camps that you'll discover, if you haven't already, you will, to the kitchen. The kitchen is where you hand over your meat and your two veg, not literally, thankfully, to uh, gain some trust points with that camp. It's all good. You get a little bit of cash as well, or cash credit points in the camp. Each one has its own. Uh, but also you can hand in your bounties. These are your ears that you grab off the dead, dead. Uh, one other thing I think is worth a mention, is pretty cool, is that you can actually sabotage any of your enemy bikes that are lying around or that you've killed the previous owner of for a lot of scrap. It's actually quite a lot that gets returned when you sabotage these bikes. Other than that, just check every car that you come across. Uh, the car boot, or in American trunk, 
will contain general loot, uh, not too specific, can even be ammo, especially in the emergency vehicles. You want to check those. Um, other than that, there's the, the car bonnet. You will find, usually you will find scrap, but you can also find silencers for your guns. But remember, if the boots or the bonnet are open in any way, there will be nothing in there. As you can imagine, bikes don't mix very well with water, but neither do you. Swimming is very bad, very bad, don't do it. Look, there are some very tough moments in this game and you will be absolutely kicking yourself if you don't do this. Just make sure you quick save as often as you can. You can do this while sitting still on your bike, standing next to your bike, or standing by a bed. You can hold down the triangle button to quick save. You can also make a permanent save at both of those two locations. Any other place, you can't do it. So please make sure you do because you'll be so annoyed when you've nearly got through something difficult that you wanted to do and you die, you've got to backtrack and go over something that maybe you did hours ago. Your bike at times seems like your only friend in this world, given a bit of love and attention, especially the engine condition which you can see on the right hand side there, marked by the tool set. Uh, you need to repair it and you'll need scrap to do that. Other than that, you need to fill it with petrol. You'll run out quite quickly. Petrol stations you can ride straight up to and you don't need to get off your bike to refuel. The same goes for the, uh, the petrol stations inside your own friendly camps. Uh, and of course the petrol cans themselves. Once you find one in a certain location, uh, they will respawn there the next time you go back to that location and they never run out of fuel. The cans themselves are just seemingly endless. They're a bottomless pit of fuel. Petrol cans can also be very useful explosive devices if you throw them towards your enemy and shoot them to detonate. If you really want to, you can save a little fuel by rolling down the hills, but I find that incredibly boring and not really what this game is all about. Though it is effective perhaps if you're if you're quite some way from a, a petrol station, that might help you conserve a little bit. But in all honesty, I would just tear it up. There's a trophy for accumulating time for drifting on your bike. So for me, it's way more fun to drift around the corners with your bike and just put your foot to the floor. I honestly didn't have a problem finding fuel in the game. Now quite early on in the game you do have to make a bit of a choice. Um, I'm going to give you what I did and I still think it's the best choice. It's this point in the game where you've gone and picked up a drug stash and you've got to, you've got to choose whether you take it to Copeland's camp or Tucker's camp. These are the two camps that you'll un uncover at the beginning. Tucker's camp has weapons for sale. Copeland's camp has bike upgrades for sale. It's that simple and you've got to choose which one. Personally, I would go for Tucker's camp every time. Uh, with good bike management early on, you probably won't need the upgrades that uh, they offer you. In my opinion, getting better weapons early on is something you're really going to need to do. Okay, there's a couple of things I want to tell you about these Nero stations. There's some good stuff inside. You want to get in there and before you can unlock the door, you have to power up the generator, which will power the door. Um, but before you do that, of course, you will know you need to go and cut off the speakers, right? Yeah, do that. Cut off the speakers. That's definitely the right thing to do. The hard lesson I learned was make sure that you get them all before you actually power on the generator. I didn't do that this time and look, uh, two of the alarms are going off on the minimap that you can see and they will attract walkers, whatever you want to call them, swarmers, lots of dead things, um, that you're going to have to clean up after you've dealt with this situation. It could be a lot worse, um, but as a lesson learned from me, I'm passing on to you, the best way you can get around this is, is do this. Go to the generator and look up trace every cable um, you can from that generator. There's sometimes four or five of them. This case is two, um, but it wasn't the only places that speakers were. There were two speakers on top of the main building, but over here following the cable, there was also one on top of this little outpost um, station away from the station. Um, and I followed the speaker and again, the same on the other side. So make sure you do that. Otherwise you'll have a nasty mess to deal with. Inside every Nero station is a special crate, which inside you will find a Nero injector. Now you get to choose which of your special attributes you would give this injection to. Now there's only three, your health, your stamina, and your focus. Now you can argue the points for all three. The only thing I would say is I would 
heavily weight this towards your stamina because you're going to need it later on as you take some of the hordes on. I would say stamina is the right one to choose because you're going to need to run away incredibly, incredibly bravely at times. Uh, lastly, at these Nero checkpoints, as all of the loot, including petrol, will respawn, I would say it's a really good idea to stock up if you're running low on supplies um, just by fast traveling around to each Nero checkpoint just simply to restock. I do use that quite a lot before I head out onto missions sometimes. Um, I haven't mentioned skills until now, so I will now. Um, there are three skill trees you can expand on, melee, ranged and survival. At the very beginning of the game though, I would put all your points into melee. Uh, the first two or three points I would, um, you want to get this one, field repairs, uh, to repair your melee weapons with scrap. Um, and then I would add hard hitter as well to that to increase the damage you do when you do smack the bejesus out of them. Uh, other than that, I think if you've got an ex extra points and you want to gain more trust, um, some of those in survival are pretty good. Green thumb here, if you can work your way up to that one, um, allows you to collect double the amount of plants. And of course, the butcher. The butcher is the one I'm just adding now. Um, but this um, will double the amount of meat that you collect. Again, both of these two things, Green Thumb and the Butcher, are pretty cool because you double the amount you collect, and that means double the trust points when you return back to any one of your friendly camps. I absolutely have to tell you this. Eventually, when you're feeling brave enough to take on a horde, the first one I would do is take on the one in this location on the map. Now, the reason for this is I think it's a fairly cheesy, easy way to kill these things. Um, you can come to this cliff edge, just check the minimap for the precise location there, and you can lure a few of them up over the edge of the cliff by shooting at them, making noise, basically. If you make noise, they'll hear you, and they'll swarm up the cliff. But once you run far enough away, most of them go back down the cliff, and you'll just have a few stragglers so you can do this kind of rinse and repeat chuck a few grenades down there if you've got them if not just lure a few up that you can take out easily uh, repair your weapons come back it's it's up to you how you do it but I found this when I was really early in the game I had really bad weapons a really nice easy way to do it. you can lure them into the choke points where there's a few explosive barrels and I've, I think that's a really easy way to take out your first horde okay there's not much more to say I guess the ambush Camps are worth a mention. It's really worth taking these on, um, doing them stealthily as you can. It's great for getting XP, leveling up. Um, but once you have completed them and taken everybody out, you'll find a little bunker. Uh, it's usually concealed in one of these round uh, bunker lids. Anyway, uh, once you get inside, there will be a map which will demist the nearby area. It's pretty useful. Um, it will expose certain things that you maybe not found yet. Um, other than that, I would just get on out there and do as many side missions as you can, uh, as many quests you can, explore the game. Um, you'll come across some crazy things where you think you're helping somebody with the blue question mark icons, by the way. And any any anybody who's got a blue icon above them is somebody you are trying to help. Um, but beware that it's not always that straightforward. You will get ambushed by some of these guys. Um, just be prepared. Um, I'll leave you with this little glitch that I discovered um, while I was playing. It just It's fun, so I stuck it on the end of the video. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I do hope that these tips were useful to you, and I, I love the fact that people will share their tips. So please do put your tips for this game in the comment section below. Share it around. Um, I love that you guys can do that in these vi after these videos, so please make sure that you do. As always, thank you so very much for watching the video. I do hope it's been useful. All the very best. Please take care and good night.